Hello, everybody. Hello, all my friends. Thank you so much for being here. This is, I'm so excited because this is the first ever uh, Bridgers live stream. The Bridgers community, I'm going to tell you about in a minute, but um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here. It's November 5th. Um, the U.S. election is not quite over, but boy, are we divided. And um, this live stream, just like my work, um, is all about um, figuring out how regular folks can build bridges um, where they are needed, because I think all of us uh, feel a need, feel a desire to do that in these times, but it's not always clear necessarily how to do that. And that's what this conversation is. I'm excited to introduce our guests, uh, first guests in a moment. Um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I uh, All of you in the chat, I see um, Noor and Sandra are here, uh, Zahra, Poor, and Muhammad, thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. If you're watching the replay of this, thank you so much for being here. And um, let us go ahead and get started. Before I introduce um, our amazing guest, give you a sense about what this American. Um, I've never gone hungry in my life. I had parents who loved me. I've had a tremendous amounts of privilege and um, the discrimination and suffering that is a fact of life for so many of you and so many people, I, I just haven't um, dealt with that uh, for the most part. And that's not fair. Um, I, I don't think it's my fault, but I think it's not a situation that anybody wants. Um, and so we have to try to think about ways to change that. When I um, got out of my own uh, context or my own bubble, it was when I studied abroad in Ecuador when I was 21 and I went into college. Um, and then after college, I volunteered in Central America for a time. And I was immediately struck by the how different the world was. Um, same people, same desires for our children, but the way we see things was so vastly different. And, and I remember coming back to the United States and then talking with uh, my compatriots and family and friends and others who were just like me prior to my travels. And I saw this incredible gap between what people see and know and understand about each other. Um, and what struck me the most was that it was often the source of that, that not knowing was often a source of um, uh, a snowball of, of problems and issues that, that happen socially, collectively, even individually. And so I've, I, it has been my calling um, since I was a kid um, to try to work to bridge those, those gaps as much as I can. Um, I, I want to uh, start off with a, a very quick poll and if you want to answer yes, uh, throw a little pizza emoji into the chat. If you are a no, throw an ice cream into the chat. Um, have you ever had the privilege of traveling into someone else's world uh, other than your own and really getting immersed and really experiencing it? It doesn't have to be traveling to another culture, but um, even just another person. Do you feel that you've... Um, been able to experience someone else's world. I'd love to know. Um, and if you uh, may, may take are you, the pizza and the ice cream, maybe aren't uh, emojis that you're used to using all the time. So there might be a little uh, delay on that and that's no problem. But um, I, I uh, wanna thank all of my amazing Bridgers, my Bridging com Bridgers community that made this uh, live stream possible. And this is the, I have a, uh, here it is. So at, um, on our Bridgers community, it lives on Patreon. And these are our folks who have um, expressed a, a similar um, desire as I have to try to build bridges. And um, they, they have our, my most important community, my inner circle, I looked at them for guidance and ideas. Um, if you are uh, present, guys, uh, please throw a little pizza also in the chat. Um, that would be wonderful. 
And I'm so glad to see all of you here. I want to say um, th very, very special thank you to you. Um, I want to uh, introduce my guests. Um, Christina and Montana of Polar Bear Kitchen are um, some um, two amazing women who are entrepreneurs and uh, change makers. They uh, use uh, smoothies that are uh, blended of flavors and cultures from all over the world. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit. And here they are. Um, they are incredible people. And I'm going to uh, wait until I bring them on to tell you the story of how we met because it was pretty uh, amazing. But um, they're, they're based in LA, but they make delicious smoothies. And if you remember uh, during the protests in Iraq last fall, they actually named a drink after the Iraqi protesters that, that the protesters themselves cho chose through a poll uh, called Tuk Tuk. And that was a really um, a neat way and generous way uh, for them to express solidarity. Um, okay, um, I, I have just uh, heard in my ear that I will slow down a little bit um, because it's going, going a little bit fast for some people. And I wanna tell you who is in my ear. I wanna introduce them. So Sandra, um, and Noor are two of my very good friends um, who also are fluent in Arabic, much more so than me. And so they're helping monitor the comments and help uh, keeping me. I've got them in one ear and I've got you all in the other ear. So um, we're, we're, we're doing that. So I'm gonna slow down a little bit, but um, I, I am so excited to have Christina and Montana here as my very first guests because um, they are our story is is a little bit unique and so i'm going to go ahead and uh, bring them on hello christina you are hi. live hi montana you are also live how are you guys we're doing oh, we're good. Very wonderful <laughs> um, i cannot thank you enough for being here and being my very first guest it's so um exciting to me and i i I was thinking that I could tell the story of how we met, but maybe um, maybe you guys might want to um, uh, tell. Would, would you would you like to, uh, Christina? Would you like to tell from your your perspective how that happened? Yes, we were uh, my town and I were at the city hall farmers market, and you was handing out diet cokes, and we we're like, "What's going on with this guy with the diet cokes?" <laughs> And I was like, there seems something more than Diet Coke happening. So I went over there to see what's going on. And you told us about the devastating horrors that are happening in Iraq and really using that symbol of the size of the Diet Coke and to really see how harmful the danger was as far as, as the weapons these uh, government was using against their own people. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so that's basically how we met. And we wanted to be part um, of that. It, we wanted to do something. Um, well, <laughs> and I, then you came over uh, and tasted our smoothie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yes, and and it was it was a match. Um, I uh, <laughs> can tell you that from my perspective. So this was in November of last year, in the heat of the protests um, in Iraq, when um, a lot of. Uh, uh, protesters were being killed in a variety of ways, um, one of which was using the, the um, military grade ballistic gas canisters uh, that are as the size of a soda can but travel like bullets and um, were being used to, to uh, kill people and, and maim them and suppress um, the, the protests. And so I felt horrible. Um, and I didn't know what to do. So I, with some Iraqi friends, we thought of the Iraqi soda challenge. And um, mm -hmm. I, I went to uh, the farmer's market outside of City Hall in Los Angeles to uh, just sort of tell people about what was going on, my little poster. And uh, pretty soon, um, here comes uh, Christina, who uh, was immediately interested it, it interested and I could tell that she was very sincere when she wanted to know what was going on because um, it's very strange I'm sure just handing out uh, sodas and 
I mean, I don't think, Christina, you correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't think I was even halfway through um, explaining what was going on. And you just look at me and you said, we'll name a smoothie after them. <laughs> and I and I thought, what? Yes, please. That would be amazing. Um, and so uh, you did. We actually held a poll um, of all the folks that, that uh, followed uh, we're following at the time, and many of you um, in this chat um, might have been part of that. And there was, of course, we're talking about Iraqis, so there was a million different views, a uh, million different opinions. But the the most um, the popular one was called Tuk Tuk, named after the three wheeled taxis that were used to carry people away who were injured. Um, and you made it, and in January you launched it, and I came and tasted it, and I remember there was. Uh, cucumber and mint and I think some melon and some citrus yeah. and um, I don't know if you you make so many smoothies um, I don't know if you remember it but it was a really amazing way for you guys to show um, uh, that kind of love and solidarity and that meant the world to me um, yeah. I'm in, in fact I'm gonna um, just show very briefly so bear, I, I appreciate everyone bearing with me because I'm um, new at navigating this, but hopefully it's not horrible. So here is the menu. This is your current menu. And the first one struck me as soon as I saw it, Brianna Taylor. I want to know all about that one. There's a shout out to RBG. Um, all of these uh, smoothies have a purpose and so i wonder if you guys might be able to share just a little bit about what polar bear polar bear kitchen is um and why you do it okay hi john yes i'm, I'm montana bailey so a little bit about polar bear kitchen a uh, polar bear kitchen is a cultural plus culinary smoothie company where we also raise awareness on culture culinary and most importantly the social issues that are happening around the world um, including those that are in the United States. Um, I also wanted to just, uh, just, just thank everyone who has chimed in on, on this live. And I also want to uh, just, you know, let everybody know we appreciate you. About our, in our, about our mission is that each, every two weeks, we, we formulate a new menu. We have smoothies that are culturally fun, um, that represents some culture from uh, uh, of another, or one or another, um, anywhere from world culture to pop culture and everything in between. We also raise awareness um, of culinary, as you can see the unique blend of our smoothies. They're not average. And while doing that, we also raise the awareness on social issues, as mentioned earlier before. Our recent menu, having uh, Brianna Taylor as one of our new fall drinks, as well as RBG, we were highlighting justice, um, hashtag justice, um, because that is something that is happening, I mean, that isn't happening um, enough in the United States. It's unfortunate that a, a single group of individuals, Black in particular, are being, um, for lack of better words, hassled in such a way where, where justice is not being brought due to uh, different crimes, especially those within the criminal justice um, realm. And so we just wanted to, to give fight to that. Brianna Taylor had done amazingly well. While we, uh, while, while we raised awareness about uh, Brianna Taylor, no, not, not any of the proceeds went to the family. However, the proceeds are going to support those individuals who are on the front line advocating for like um, victims and like issues um, in, in the civil rights community. And so that's just a little bit about Polar Bear Kitchen. We, uh, we are small prepackaged smoothies. We, we do a lot by doing a little and we just try to leave our footprint here um, trying to make a difference with our smoothies one taste at a time. Christina? Yeah. Basically what she said. <laughs> No, I um, when I first fun wanted when I first started Polar Bear Kitchen, my mission has always been to support the people. Um, I didn't know how to do that 
but I was able to correlate smoothies. People want fresh, you know, smoothies and also people want to be part of something, you know. So with that small smoothie, I feel like we can make a change in the world, you know, and really supporting all our brothers and sisters from around the world, basically. Fabulous. Um, well, I know, I know that a lot of uh, folks here um, are also, and I'm, I'm reading the the comments here. Cannot express to you um, uh, how grateful I am, um, John. Thank you so much. And um, hey, I know this girl. This is the girl from the Tuk Tuk Juice, um, and <laughs> you, most beautiful ladies in the world. Thank you of us. Oh, um, and wow! Thank I, you. I know that. I know that a lot of um, people have really appreciated what you guys have done. Um, how what, was it? Was there any big change, or how did you experience um, maybe meeting or interacting with a lot of Iraqis? I, I don't imagine that you you know had worked with or known a lot of them before. But how has that been since then in the in this past year? Um, it's actually been an eye opener, to be honest with you. I, when we, soon as we launched Tuk Tuk, it it became as though we were all family. You know, we were definitely getting a lot of um, uh, messages and our Instagram uh, people are sending us pictures that was really going on on front lines of the protesters and really telling us about their families. And really, just really wanting us to really understand the magnitude of what's going on. And I really felt like they believed in us, you know, and took us as a support, you know, and that was uh, life changing for me and for our company to be part of something around the world and how it became so tangible for us. So it was it was incredible feeling. <laughs> Um, well, I know, and Wushi Lushi says, thank you for the kindness of your hearts towards others. I know that um, so many people um, expressed a lot of gratitude, um, and, and maybe folks in, in the comments, if you are um, Iraqi or have a, a Iraqi um, background, maybe you um, uh, you know can, can attest to this, mm -hmm. that uh, it, it felt to me that people were saying we didn't know that people cared. We didn't know. We, we thought we were invisible. We didn't know that people um, would, would do this for us and, and just, ex you know, such uh, amazing heartfelt expressions of gratitude. And I love seeing those connections happen. Um, so I, and, and you guys made it happen all because Christina, you came up and you're a friendly person and you wanted to know what this lonely guy was doing with his sign and his soda cans. And now here we are. <laughs> So um, it's just a, you know, a, a testament to your character. Um, I want to ask you, so today is November 5th. Uh, we, we don't yet have um, a officially declared winner of the U.S. election. But in, in many ways, um, I, I think it's less relevant than the state that our country is in now. Whoever is in the uh, White House we are so divided and I don't need to go into um, a lot of detail on that because whether you are living in the United States or living um, abroad, um, it, it's, it's just the, the times are such that that's a reality for everyone. But I I'm curious to know um, when you guys are work because for Polar Bear Kitchen has been working to raise social awareness on issues of justice. Uh, because, as you said in, in the MLK quote um, on your on your website, uh, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, and and I, I would love to know from you um, how do you how are you experiencing this situation today? Um, do you, and and put, feel free to provide any context. You know how have you experienced it in your life? Um, I. Mm -hmm. I want to talk. I in my mind, I'm replaying, uh, so everybody knows my inner dialogue. Uh, stop talking so much, John. Let your let your. Um, but I think it's business that makes me uh, cont continue to talk. Uh, but I, I just wanted to share that you know I 
feel so many feelings um, about this because it's so important and yet so many people either don't see it or choose not to see it or actively resist it. Um, and it's, it's, um, it's really unfortunate. So I, I don't know what, how are you experiencing these times? Mm. Do you want to go ahead, my Tana, or? Um, Mo hey, Montana, I think you might be on mute. <laughs> I was. <laughs> or, there you are. I was yes. <laughs> there, there was a little suspense. <laughs> so um, thank you for that. So what I was stating is that, you know, during this time, it has been a bit of an emotional roller coaster. Nonetheless, um, we stay we stay hopeful and we're resilient during this process. Um, growing up, however, we didn't we didn't experience this in such a light feeling that change was about to happen. Unfortunately, it's a change that shouldn't even have to happen, but it's our reality. Um, growing up, it was it was a place in a space of acceptance. This is what it is, and. Um, that that can be sad. I mean, that is sad. You know, yeah. this is this is your stance where where you are, and you and you will not be more than. Although in our hearts and in, in our true um existence, we know that we are we are we are capable of more. We are we are more um, than just um, a statistic, more or less. You know. Um, so what we've experienced. I mean, we've been on every sense of the spectrum of angry, hopeful, excited, moved, sad, you know, um, but that's life um, in, in, a, in, in, in essence, but specific to what's happening, it was, it was, it was no, it was, um, it, it was no question on how we were relating to the Iraqi people that were experiencing what they were experiencing for their civil rights in Iraq. So without hesitation, of course, with Christina being the founder of Polar Bear Kitchen and her heart's desire to, to have a bigger soul about PBK, um, it was easy. It was, was without a doubt, tuck, tuck, boom, <laughs> let's do it. We did that and it was an amazing drink um, and it helped raise awareness. And yes, it was. to everyone who has chimed in, thank you so much. We love you too. <laughs> Yes, thank you, everybody. Um, and, and I, I see a lot of folks from Iraq, um, and and also Hawaiian as the Yigulun. Hata Achi Arabi. I'm gonna say in English this uh, this time, but I hope to do a, um, a, a live stream in Arabic soon. Um, but we appreciate all of you being here because um, it's an issue that it is universal. Um, Christina, what are what are your thoughts um, ab about what's what's happening? What is your perspective on it? Um, well, Black Lives Matter. You know, I think that is my perspective. Just to really, really take that what that means, and to really bring awareness. It doesn't. What Black Lives Matter means is that. <laughs> We deserve dignity. We deserve our dignity to be shown and to be praised. You know, it is not separating other um, ethnicities. It's really because our lives have never mattered in this format of the American dream, basically. And we want to be part of it because we helped build it, basically, through our ancestors. Um, and just really understanding racism now as a as a woman, I think as a child, you are very resilient to it. But I think as a woman and an adult, you I view racism in a different way. I view it as hatred, you know, and when you hate people so due to the color of their skin, it uh, it's disturbing, you know. And when you see that 
ricochet throughout the world, if it's um, Iraqis or if it's people who are just different, you know, um, and you just hate them because of their difference, is uh, is sickening to the human rights of people, you know. So I'm always about supporting the human being and the well-being of his status. So yeah. Can, can I ask you, um, my, you know, from that story at the beginning where I said, you know, I was really just struck so strongly about the gap in people's perspective and understanding that, you know, I, there are amazingly salt of the earth, good people in Nicaragua and Guatemala and Ecuador and Iraq yeah. and so many places that I've been able to know and love people. Um, all Americans of every stripe all over the place. Um, and yet I still think that, well, obviously power is not, uh, equity is not um, equal. And and uh, so neither is justice. Um, but um, I see that gap in understanding um, as a, as a major impediment because stubbornly, and, and maybe I would love all of you in the chat too, I would love to know um, your thoughts on this too. I stubbornly believe that based on the people that I've seen, even people who express uh, views that are what we would call uh, unaware or even ignorant, um, even racist, uh, bigoted, yeah. had they had the experiences that other people had had, or if they could um, see into someone's life, I truly believe they could not possibly um, continue thinking the same way. Do you think that's a bunch of crap? Or do you um, think there's something to that? If so, um, what, what can we do about it? I guess would be a follow-up question. But first, do you agree with that or not? And, and folks in the chat, please let us know too. Uh, if you agree, throw up some pizza. If you disagree, throw up some ice cream. I'm kind of 50-50 about that because when you take a group of individuals who have been um, raised from such a young age to believe that your life, your existence is more superior than others and to look at someone else less than human, um, it's 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 a it's a concrete perspective. Um, you 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 would be, have to be a wide open individual to say, let me see, because this person bleeds just like I do. Um, but mm -hmm. when you have a bigoted mindset, um, individuals that are not like them are seen as animalistic, not human at all. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and for their, for their belief that this is what they're supposed to go through. This is yeah. normal. And it's not, it's not. Um, and a mindset is a very difficult, it's a very difficult disease to heal. You yeah. really have to be open. And to those who have, because they've been denied the truth, they then are awakened and they are over they are overjoyed with an overwhelming sense of change they're, they're the ones on the front line because they now experience this guilt of the strife that they have caused so it really just depends um it, it really just depends just where where the mind is at mm. Um, right. Christina, what, what do you think about it? I I really agree with my sister. I I think um, I think the bottom line is people want power over other people, and bigotry is born from that, basically, and hatred is born from that. And if it doesn't really matter if you put someone else in someone else's shoes. Uh, if you don't have the right mindset to assimilate and assimilate in peacefully, then you're trying to take over someone else's um, environment and, and control them. 
So the bottom line is that our minds and our way of thinking to change. You know, because power is not absolutely. Real. I want to I want to ask um, uh, some of our our uh, viewers what you what you all think. Um, Zozo 2017, I liked this comment um, because it really shows the gap in understanding um, that it, you know if you polled uh, Americans, uh, and, you know, and their views about who Iraqis are or what life is like there, um, mm -hmm. exactly as you guys just said that for some people, the image is that they're less than. And so if they suffer, that's normal. And you're, I mean, I couldn't, if there's one takeaway from this session is that no, that's not normal. It's not supposed to be like that. Um, and uh, I, I saw that gap between Iraqis and Americans so vividly when I lived there because mm -hmm. Americans only know, you know, um, they rightly support their loved ones that are, you know, um, in harm's way, you know, serving in the military or, uh, you know, they, whatever um, connection they have to the issue. But they, but I'm sitting in the living room of people that are feeding me and welcoming me into their lives as an American in the middle of an American war um, because I was lonely and had a sad face. Um, I, I just wish that there was a way to um, bring some of that awareness. And, and I, I appreciate you saying, um, you know, perhaps optimistically, Montana, that it's, you know, kind of 50 50, whether that's true or not. And maybe it depends on circumstances. And, and um, I'm certainly going to spend the rest of my life figuring those out. But um, I want to mm -hmm. ask uh, uh, Sandra and Noor. If you guys um, have noticed any questions in Arabic or um, uh, others that I maybe have missed that we can uh, talk to, you guys feel free to um, respond on that. Um, in the meantime, I, I just I wonder if 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 you all still have your um, pizza and your ice cream, how many have you have experienced uh, racism, basically direct? Um, uh, not just discrimination, but hatred because of who you are. Have you experienced that? Hmm. I'm hearing uh, the Sanders telling me about a comment. Um, just while you're while you're programming that, I'm gonna. Uh huh. Go ahead. I got okay. Okay. Um, we're getting a lot of lot of uh, good questions from from everybody um, in uh, Arabic, and that really shows our audience is um, very curious about your work, but also about these issues in in the U.S. Um, and uh, you know, some even have um, uh, suggestions for what you know what you ought to be doing, which is, uh, I think, well intended, but you know, sort of illustrative of the um, issue that that we're talking about. Just uh, how things look from one perspective than than to the other. Um, so, uh, what what do you think? I, I want to turn it over to um, some questions. So, hey, everybody online. Um, if you have uh, any questions for Christina and Montana, um, throw it into the chat now. Um, while you're doing that, do you guys, um, what can regular folks do who want things to be better? And um, what, what, can, what can people do if, um, let's say, they're in the United States um, and they want to contribute uh, in some small way to to making a better situation. I mean, maybe you can you can maybe think of things that you just do in your own life or that you've seen others do, or maybe you have specific uh, you know um, recommendations. But what do you think? Let's talk practical. Mm -hmm. I I think the practicality of trying to do better it starts is a it's a it's a progressive um, stepping stone. 
I think being part of a movement, it can be your own personal movement or it can be a movement that is spreading the word of awareness specifically. And when you join other people, it really helps um, empowers what the issues really are, basically. So I would say join a group or you individually be part of something and do something more. And doing something more, like I said, it's a small step, basically, um, by learning. I think people need to read more, uh, need to understand and um, self-educate themselves. And I know my Tana and I had to do that when we learned about the Iraqis that were being um, bullied and killed, basically. So we had to take it upon ourselves to learn. So it just starts with learning and being part of something. And yeah, and I'm hearing you also say get involved and connect with others. Um, and every everything, every little step you take leads to other steps and other opportunities. So the point is to to act and step forward. Montana, yeah. what do you think? I will definitely agree with the educating yourself. That way you can move forward in educating others, just even in your small circle. I, on a very practical level, um, I mean, outside of being with Polar Bear Kitchen and my own organization that I run on the side, I drive by. If, it, if there's a group of individuals that are protesting for Black Lives Matter, I, I honk my horn like there's nobody tomorrow. And I, I create this wave at the light where everyone is joining in, letting them know that your voices are being heard. And that, that tends to stick with someone because it, it's, a, it's an experience and they go home and now, now, they want to, now they want to learn more about it and how they can be a part, of, a part of it. Christina said, join a group. I make it my business to post. I post every chance that I get in the stories. People, social media is, a, is an amazing outlet that can stream out to millions of individuals. If I just let them know this is a black owned business or this black lives matter or um illustrate the injustice that's that's happening um just you know at, at the at the at my fingertips then i'm going to do that too uh, so you know I, i'm just piggybacking off of what christina said and just trying to do my part as well um we volunteer we financially support, and most importantly, a lot of a lot of individuals in our community feel like our vote does not matter, and it does. Um, our vote does matter, um, especially when we are educating ourselves on different propositions, different measures, and and figuring out how we can amend those um, particular propositions. Because um, there have been some propositions that I have read that that said clearly in black and white um, that racism is present, um, but we don't read again, educating ourselves and being that and being that change eventually that we want to see. Right. And I think just want to say when we uh, go ahead, John. Just no, no, no you, you go ahead. Just, uh, I think really, um, what Polar Bear Kitchen does when we want to bring awareness, we we got a lot of um, images from the Iraqis in our Instagram, and we did um, put them up on our feed or on our stories so people can actually actually see. Because I think now in in modern times, people want to see um, the action, you know. And I think right. by bringing that experience to our platform has really made awareness to what's happening over there. And just just a lot of issues that are happening in our communities and around the world. You know, and so I encourage people to keep posting, you know, keep sharing, you know, because that is a tool that is a very conceptual tool that people can see as well. And we don't and we don't want it to be out of sight, out of mind. You know exactly. as long as we don't see it, as long as we don't see it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Right. But it does. You know, and it, and it's happening. It's happening now. <laughs> yeah. Um. I I I think, um, that is is one of the mo more insidious, negative consequences of an imbalance of power, um, is when people have the ability to not pay attention, 
Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I have to tell you that um, in the world that I live in, most of the people I know would help you in a moment, you know, on the street, if they didn't know you and you needed something, um, they would uh, call people out out loud if they s- heard somebody say something racist in front of them. Um, but otherwise, um, you know, we are busy. Um, we're doing other things. I'm, uh, you know, uh, creating content, and I'm uh, I'm going to Iraq. I'm from the United States. Uh, I grew up, I grew up with Black Americans, Brown Americans, you know, all, all sorts of other Americans, and I, you know, and off I go to to other countries. I'm not saying that that's uh, better or worse. We're all humans, but um, I am saying that uh, that's a big problem. Um, that that creative people um, can can hopefully figure out ways to dislodge if like you said we we get involved we talk to each other and every little thing counts um, even honking at people when they're protesting so they feel supported um, I would so Mustafa says um, we need to create a, a diversity committee and organizations um, to to sort of institutionalize, um, uh, ways is one one way to to address it. Um, I want to ask uh, N- Noor and Sandra if there are any uh, burning questions uh, from folks. Otherwise, I think people are generally following um, the the conversation and um, uh, just appreciating what you guys are are um, offering to um, the the world through through your work, and I certainly do. Um, Thank you. Thank so, you. so here we, yeah. Um, yeah, I, well, I, th- I think I keep putting Sandra and, uh, and Noor's name on there. And I think some people think those, that's your name. That's my fault for miscommunicating that. Um, uh, but, um, I, I think they're, they're talking about you guys in that sense. No, thank you. Um, I don't know. Are there any, um, last parting thoughts or, um, you know, if there's if there's one takeaway that you would like people to know from your experience or or what you would um, want for the future, what would it be? Peace, world peace. That's it. That's why <laughs> world peace. I want us to um, continue to to that will be our focus is to establish world peace in our societies and around the world basically, and really look within each other and know that we are humans and we are special and and God created us to be united, you know? So that's something I want to continue to plant seeds and grow and to have world peace. Yeah. Montana. I I, I agree. Um, Martin Luther King said in his I have a dream speech that uh, I dream that one day that we will not be judged by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. Um, Not only do I hope for the American people to um, establish that within the American dream, but all across um, the world, you know, because we're one nation under God, all of us (laughs) together. Um, We're all brothers and sisters. And the, the end result is peace we should be able to be there for our brethren. Um, when they hurt, we hurt. When they rise, we rise. You know, um, that that's how it's supposed to be. Well, I, yeah. I think that, I think, uh, you know, a, a perfect example of how every little thing, ma- that's, that's what I would say uh, um, to echo everything that you guys have said, but also to, add, you know, add just every, every tiny thing matters. Every tiny thing reverberates. Because now we've got thousands of people in Iraq or who are Arabic speakers who know of you guys, who appreciate your work. You've learned so much from them. Um, yes. I've gotten the, the uh, um, privilege to know you, and I intend on working with you for many, many years to come. And all of those things happened because Christina made a decision to just go over and talk to me, and that's it. So, so if you think... Um, Things are tough and difficult. They are, um, yes. and if the mountain is tall, and um, it is, 
but mm -hmm. every step makes a difference and, and turns into something else. Yes. Um, I, I, I want to thank you guys so, so much for sharing your time and your insights with us. Um, I'm going to throw up on here where people can find you. You are at Polar Bear Kitchen um, on Instagram and uh, there's a the link to your website also. Um, where can people find smoothies? Oh, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with, um, with, co with COVID happening right now, we are, we are centrally based at a farmer's market in Hollywood. Um, we also are working on being able to get our product shipped. So that's coming soon. Uh, we deliver our smoothies. Uh, again, our smoothies are, are available for pickup right at the Hollywood Farmer's Market every Sunday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And if you go online, you can place an order for delivery. You're, you will see one of us lovely ladies personally hand deliver <laughs> your smoothies <laughs> to you. Um, yeah. And so that's, that, that's our, those are our avenues right now. And then once COVID is over, and we have free range. Trust me, we're going to be everywhere. <laughs> oh, I believe it. I trust you. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I also really want to um, say a very special thank you to all of our Bridgers. And I just, um, it's it's important to tell you um, what that is. We, oh, I'm, I'm growing a, a long-term community of people who are committed to um, talking in this way and engaging in this way. Um, it's a, uh, I'll share the screen here. Um, it's a community that uh, shares ideas and um, we talk about, so um, for a couple dollars each month, it's uh, you're able to see content before others, uh, anyone else on the internet. Oh, that's my son there. Um, <laughs> uh, he's <laughs> in, in, the, in the back seat. But um, also uh, provide feedback on videos before they're finished. So you can actually be part of the uh, production process. Uh, we have monthly meetings to, to decide on strategy. I, 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 the message that I would wanna tell people is that um, you know, things require money, but much more important than that are they require people who believe in something and wanna work together. And that's the community that this is. And so if that's something that appeals to you, um, you should you should definitely check that out. The um, I am going to stop sharing this screen. You can also uh, find, oh, and m many thanks. I must thank um, my, my amazing Bridgers um, also for a new, I'm sorry that I will get faster at this uh, over time. Um, this snazzy new website um, sort of lays out exactly what we're what we're doing and what we're um, trying to achieve, and um, has a has information about some of the impact we've had, uh, including the Iraqi soda challenge that we mentioned there, um, work and peace education, and. Uh, all sorts of, of ways to to join and support the Bridgers community um, donations, even some some uh, uh, merch coming soon to rep uh, the social change. Um, yeah. I, I just want to thank you guys again so much for for being a part of this and being my very first guest ever. It's <laughs> no, <laughs> it's yeah. it's no it's no secret that um, where I, I am uh, learning. And so if uh, folks you know, are, are watching, we really appreciate that. Um, hope that this goes far and wide in the future, but um, I, I just really, really thank all of you for being here and want um, to thank you, Christina and Montana for your work. And I can't wait for this darn pandemic to um, change so that we can, <laughs> so that I can be pounding the pavement with you guys and doing all sorts of great things. Um, sure. th thank you all so much. I just want to say Thank I you. want to send love to the Iraqi people and I can't wait to visit Iraq one day and just to really learn more about their culture and be part of it as well. Amazing. Perfect mm -hmm. way to end our first ever live mm -hmm. stream. Thank you so much. And thank you to all. We will see you again very soon. Mm -hmm.